All right, so let me take a quick look. Let's take a quick look together at these handouts. Uh, I'll give you a, a, the general look at what they are, and then we will get hands-on. As I said, the software is already uh, installed on these computers. The WAMP software is already on these computers. It doesn't need to be downloaded. On your own computer, you would. But actually, let me take a little step back. As I said, this class, uh, I'm not asking you to go purchase an account at GoDaddy or Bluehost or anything like that. We're going to do it all for free with, with WAMP. Now that does mean that it will be a little bit more, it'll be a little complicated in the beginning to set it up. But once it's set up and we get used to setting it up, it'll work fine. This is one of the reasons why you go to GoDaddy or Bluehost or WordPress.com because you just set it up there very quickly, you pay for it and it's ready to go. For us, we have a little bit of setup and that's why I've got these handouts. If you notice, the, the handouts have a number on them. Campos, e-commerce one the the files have a have a number and also when you open the when you're looking at the file it has a number uh, looking at number one you see it's got there one set up WAMP server the other handout uh, has also a number at the top two setting up WordPress then I'll give you three and four and five etc but we'll look at number one briefly uh, you don't have to do this in this room. You don't have to download WAM server. It's it's already installed. If you go home, uh, you would follow the link, follow the the steps here. It would download. You would need to then install it. I don't remember how much space it takes up at the moment. Probably like 300 megabytes or something. So uh, not not a lot of space on your own computer, but uh, it is a few hundred megabytes. Uh, you would just follow the steps of setting it up on your own personal computer. Again, you don't need to do that here. I've got it all set up. But what we do need to do, and what I'll write in my notes, and what you should write in your notes, is every time we come into this room, so tasks, every time you come to class, turn on your computer if it's not on already, every time you come to class on the desktop, double click the WAMP icon. Do you see on your desktop you've got a little magenta W on your desktop? Double click that. That's that WAMP icon. It's either just says WAMP or WAMP server or WAMP server 64 or something. It's that one that's a W right there. Double click that. You don't get any feedback that says welcome to WAMP. You know it doesn't pop up to tell you you've done it right. Um, what we'll see is, okay, you're going to double click the WAMP icon, then, oops, uh, then look at the bottom right of your computer to see a little W. On the bottom right corner, hopefully, you see a little W. Okay. If you saw it for a moment and then it went away, it might be hidden inside of the triangle. You see a triangle. So the, really, the only way that you kind of confirm that WAMP is on is that uh, on the bottom right corner, it may obviously be there, or it may be hidden inside of the little triangle. I see a W. That's the WAMP server icon. It first starts off red, that it's not ready yet. Then it becomes orange. Then it becomes green. Question? What about WAMP? On the Mac, uh, I think that icon will appear up on the top menu bar, the universal menu bar up on the Mac, on the top. But the, these directions are the same. Um, actually, good point. Uh, OK, good point. I forgot to do this. Um, I'm also including in the network folder Mac instructions. I had them here, but I forgot to put them in there. Uh, I also have Mac versions of the instructions, which are slightly different on the Mac. I put them into the network folder now. So if you um, if you need Mac instructions for home, I've got a folder there called Mac. Only instructions one and two will be a little bit different. Three, four, five, etc. will be the same. Okay. So in in the room here, um, you don't have to install WAMP. But you do have to double click the the W. You'll then see the little W on the corner. 
Uh, it'll go from red to orange to green. Goes from red to orange to green. Ready to use. Okay, lastly, um, open your web browser and go to the address http colon slash slash localhost slash no dot com dot biz or anything like that let's give this a try make sure you've double clicked the WAMP icon check that it's green in the corner open up any web browser you want you go to the address http colon slash slash localhost slash not dot com or dot anything. If that worked, what you should see is this WAMP server configuration screen. Did everyone see this? Anyone having a little trouble? This is localhost. This is the WAMP server. Uh, this is the WAMP software running. Remember I said, OK, in the real world, I need to go to Bluehost and buy a domain name, victorsbakery.com, and I need to buy the server space, 2 gigabytes, 10 gigabytes, whatever. I need to go buy that. Well, for this class, we can use WAMP server. We can use WAMP or MAMP if you're on the Mac. And you get like a virtual server. You get this free server that you can only access from the computer you're sitting at. I cannot look at your website on your computer. I can only look on my website on my computer on localhost. And so that's the address here. So if you're able to see this WAMP server icon with all of these little plugins and extensions and stuff, you're on the right path. Yes? So does that change on the computer or is that the same you can sit at any computer next time you come in. You just need to do the same steps, uh, and then you'll be able to access your website on your computer. Now, if you're asking, we're not there yet, if you're asking, will I be able to access my website when we come back Thursday, will I be able to access my Tuesday website? Let me get to that a little bit later. So if you're able to see the WAMP server icon here, um, this is what I was saying on the very last step of the handout. Confirm WAMP server works by going to your web browser and going to that address. Sometimes that address, localhost, doesn't work. So you can uh, type the IP address. These numbers are equivalent. So either should work. And right now we've confirmed that when we go to the web browser, we see localhost. And then having that little green icon on the bottom right corner tells you that too. The local server, WAMP server is running, it's a virtual server. So in this class, we don't really need to do anything with instruction number one, handout number one. This is for you to set yourself up, set up the software at home. Does it always need to run? The WAMP server? Yes, always. We won't be able to use our website with our WAMP server. That's why you're building. You publish it. service. Yeah, eventually when we, when we get to the end of the class, we will migrate what we do here from WAMP server to a real server. And then after that, you don't we need WAMP server because you're on a real server on the internet. It's just yes. It's our, it's our play, playground to set up our site here, and then we'll put it out eventually online. And that's a good point. If you've already got a website in WordPress, if you've already got GoDaddy, if you've already got, you know, um, Bluehost and such, you are free to do all of this that we're going to learn on your real website. The, the only problem might be that as you work on your site, all of that stuff will be public. As you add the, the e-commerce, as you change your colors and themes, all of that will be visible and public to everyone. So one reason why, even though if you already have GoDaddy, why you might still want to use WAMP 
is because it's not public. I'm working on it at, at the comfort of my own computer, and then eventually I, I migrate it or transfer it to a real server. So not much on handout number one. Any, any questions on handout number one? Now, uh, as we go through the class, of course, at any time you can raise your hand. I'll come help you out, no problem. Uh, I, don't wanna fall, I don't want you to fall behind, because it is very easy to fall behind in the beginning, because it is a little technical in the beginning. Once we've got the infrastructure set up, get logging into WordPress is going to be a lot more straightforward. You're, you're free to help each other out, of course. Uh, if you see your neighbor falling behind and such, go ahead and help, but I ask that you do it at a reasonable volume. It's easy to distract uh, a classmate or myself while you're helping another classmate. So raise your hand, I'll come help you out, or if you help each other out, please do it at a low volume. Yes? Do you have a recommendation for courses? Is it really a site that That's one of the things we'll cover a little bit more in detail later once we know what kind of site you need. Let's look at handout number two. So on the second handout, In general, let me give you an overview of what it says here, and then we will actually do it. Big step number one, we have to download the WordPress software. We'll do that in a moment. Uh, I think the version number is slightly different than what I've got on my handout, but that's okay. If we go to WordPress right now and we see that it's 4.9.2, don't freak out. That mine says 9.1, obviously get the latest one. It's just that, again, technology changes. Uh, and maybe uh, the handout is you know one version behind, but the ideas still are the same. So in a moment, together, we'll go to the site, we'll download the software. Well, in order for WordPress to work, it has to be attached to a database. All of that content that you're managing, your pictures, your text, your products, exist in a database. We will be able to create a database with WAMP. We're going to do that in a moment on this link. So we're going to download the software, set up a database, and then install WordPress so that it connects to the database. That will be right here. Once we've done that together, we will be able to access your website on your computer at localhost slash whatever we call your folder. I just have it named here generically WordPress. We'll show you where you can set that up in a moment but only you will be able to access your WordPress site on your computer. Um, this is the general concept of what we're going to do for steps, but with several sub-steps. And again, this always happens. It does confuse people. It is a little tricky the first one or two times or so, three times maybe. But then eventually it sinks in and you're able to do it. Because together I'm going to walk us through all of these steps right now. But I'm not going to do it every time. Eventually, by the third or fourth class, I would like that you would be able to do this on your own. As soon as you walk in, you do this, and we're ready to go. For the first few times, it's fine. We'll take our time, and we'll set this up right. So first step, let's go to WordPress.org, and we're going to download the software. WordPress.org. And click right there, download WordPress. Now I'm in Firefox web browser. It might be slightly different in Chrome and such, but again, this is basic computer stuff. You should be able to visit websites and download software. We've got version 4.9.5, 8 megabytes. Uh, click on that, download WordPress 4.9.5 not the one that says download the tar gz file. You don't want that. You want the one that is the nice blue button. Click that, and then depending on your web browser, it will either download automatically to your desktop, or it may pop up to ask you what to do. You want to save that. Again, if you didn't get the pop-up, you probably got an arrow down here that told you it downloaded to the desktop or something. Well, that got downloaded somewhere probably on the desktop. On my computer, it downloaded to my desktop. Check your desktop, it probably downloaded there. It's a zip file. It's compressed. We need to uncompress it to use it. You want to right click the zip file and select Extract. Extract. 
extract all, yes. So you get a compressed zip file, you have to extract it. On the Mac, the Mac automatically unzips it. On Windows, we have to manually do it. So right-click Extract All. It says we're about to extract this. It's going to go to the desktop or, or wherever yours ended up, maybe on the Downloads folder. It's going to get extracted. It's going to show the result. Click Extract. Question. Just ex just let it extract to the desktop, and then on the next steps, we will see what we do with that. So it might take a moment to extract those 8 megabytes become 25 megabytes. Wait for that to extract eventually. Okay, so after it extracts, you get a folder on the desktop. This is a little, uh, little odd here. You get a folder on the desktop with the with the number four nine five, and then inside of it, you get the actual WordPress software folder. Now, there's nothing interesting inside of that folder. If you look in there, uh, there are a bunch of files that you don't need to work with at all. It's just that the software is now extracted. We've downloaded it. We've extracted it. We're going to use. We're going to install the software in a moment. That's what step one is right here. Go to the site, download the file, right-click Extract. Okay, then I've got here, um, inside of that, so step one, um, step one D, okay, step one C. After we extract it, it's on your desktop, right? Uh, then WordPress is on the C drive, and we're going to copy this WordPress folder into the WW folder inside of the WAMP folder. Let me show you that, then we'll do it. The idea here is that we're going to copy this file in just a moment into the computer window, local disk C, the C drive. You see we've got a folder in there called WAMP64. When I open that one, I see a folder called www. Inside of that folder is where we can put as many websites as we want. Where, uh, WAMP allows us to create many websites, as many as we want. We just need to include our website in that folder. So when I extracted the WordPress folder, I'm going to copy that, right-click copy, and then I'm going to paste it into the WW folder inside of WAMP. So again, to show you where that WAMP folder is inside of computer, inside of local disk C, inside of WAMP64, inside of www. This is where I'm going to copy the, the folder, right-click copy, and then I'm going to right-click paste into www. Not the zip, the extracted version. Yeah. Can I ask why you would copy it and not just move it? Uh, if you move the original file and we start to change this and make mistakes or whatever, and I want to start over, I'd have to go back to WordPress.org and download it fresh.
So what that said, um, OK, so notice the notes here. Copy your WordPress folder, not the zip file, into the WW folder. OK, check. Step two, sub-step A. OK, so we need to create a database in order for this folder to connect to the database. Go to that address in your web browser, obviously. So localhost slash php my admin. So in your web browser, you want to go to the address localhost slash php my admin. So localhost slash php my admin. This is where we can uh, create and manage databases. A modern website builder like WordPress uh, needs a database. A classic website builder like Dreamweaver didn't. But now because we've got a website with videos and pictures and products and all of that, it needs to be managed in a database. We don't need to be very complex here. I've got all the instructions here. OK, what do we do here? Username and password. My handout here says that your uh, username and password is going to be root, and password is nothing. Not literally nothing, but nothing. Don't write nothing. You have to write nothing. So just type root, and then nothing there, blank, yep, and then click go. All right, so we get to this complicated screen about databases. We, we don't need to do very much here. I have it spelled out in the handout. After we uh, log into uh, 
PHP my admin here using root and no password at the top in the nav bar click on databases then there's going to be a little box to create a database you can call the name of your database anything you want but I have here noted as WordPress and then we click create so you see at the top we've got a button that says databases and then we've got a box create a database and we can call this anything we want we could call our database kitty cat that'll work just fine you just need to remember how you deviated from the handout which you can but you need to note how you did things differently I'm gonna keep it easy by calling the database WordPress I'm about to set up WordPress installed into a database called WordPress so that I can use WordPress click create and you get a little yellow pop-up that says database created it might have then moved the screen but you can confirm that you did create a database of WordPress because then now on the left side these are the databases currently installed and now we've got WordPress let's pause there did everyone create a WordPress database anyone have another trouble? No, Alright, that's step two. Now here's the part where it causes people the most confusion in the beginning. Um, as I said, you can put as many websites as you want into WAMP. The difference is the name in the address here. And this address is based on the folders inside of www. When we copied the WordPress folder into the www folder, that means now I have a website, localhost slash WordPress. If I had created a, another website over here called my site, I'd be able to go to the address localhost slash my site. So any folder here, my amazing site. Any folder that I have in the WW folder can be a website. And since we copied into WW folder, WordPress, on your web browser now, go to the address localhost slash WordPress. And that should show you the WordPress welcome screen. Same, same browser. You can go to a different browser, different tab, it doesn't, doesn't quite matter. No. We just needed to look inside of, we needed to go into that uh, PHP my admin to create a database, but then after that we don't need it. So then just in the, in the address, just go to localhost slash WordPress. Uh, no, Question? Question number, if you have a question, raise your hand. Did
steps right here if we got up to this point uh, checking the handout uh, we've got the next part here okay uh, step three uh, we go to that address go to that address we're just gonna follow these steps pretty straightforward what we're gonna do is create a WordPress website again this will not be accessible by the rest of the internet only you yourself on these computers you could set this up uh, completely fake, I'm going to create a website called Victor's Bakery. Uh, I don't actually own a real bakery, uh, so I'm just going to make it all up. As we go through these steps, we will see, okay, first of all, what's the language that you want? I'll leave it as English, US, so I'll continue. Here it says, okay, to proceed, what you're going to need is a database name. Well, check. We did that a moment ago. We created a database called WordPress. We're going to need the username to access the database. Check. That's in my handout. It's root. We're going to need a password to access the database. What was the password to get to PHP my admin? Nothing. Nothing. Check. And then the host around localhost. Table prefix. Don't worry about that one. So we'll click Let's Go. And again, this is in my handout, but it's obvious of what we need to do here. So the database name. This just randomly chose the name WordPress. It's not that it knew that we've created a database called WordPress. Because we might create, like I said, we might create a database called Kitty Cat. So I'd have to change the database name here to Kitty Cat. But since we called, since we created a database called WordPress a moment ago, that's what we're going to call it here. The username to access the database, root, and the password to access it, is nothing. 
Yes. You know when you said you could use anything like kitty cat? Yes. Okay, well, we'll check what that is in just a moment. You need to go back to localhost slash phemyadmin and that will tell you. Go ahead and use what you type. Yeah. Yes, you need to connect this to the database that you created. So if you call it anything you wanted, you use that, that name. Database host is localhost, so we'll leave this alone, and table, we'll leave that alone. Question? And I need the Okay, I'll be there one moment. Let's click Submit. So this is to create the connection between the WordPress software and the database. We're going to click Run the Installation. If it failed right here, I'll help you in a moment. But I'm going to click Run. This screen, uh, which is also mentioned in my handout, uh, this is the part then, okay, uh, this is the part that you're then going to set up to, to create your website and give yourself a login name and such. We have to use root when we set up, but here we can then now set up anything we want. This is the part where I'm saying, I'm going to make this up. You can do this also if you want or whatever you want. I'm creating a website called Victor's Bakery. You can create any fictional website or real website or whatever. I, I do have a real website online, and I could name it the same thing, and it won't conflict because this is not online. Username is, well, what's the name you're going to use to log in to make changes, change the colors, add products, and all of that? And in my handout, I have a suggestion, it's a terrible suggestion, to use the username of admin and the password of password. Now, you don't want to do that in the real world, but just to have something here to set ourselves up. You can use admin and password. Uh, technically, I have password, capital P, so it's very secure. And uh, you can make it up however you want in that screen. Now, if you deviate from the handout, you need to write that down because I will not be able to retrieve your username or password. And if this is all set up you know, incorrectly, the only thing we can really do is just start again. No big loss early on, of course. But as we go on through the class, if you don't remember your own login and such, there's no way to retrieve it. It doesn't have the system to re retrieve my password via email because it's not on a real server. It's on web server. So I'm going to go with username of admin and password of password. It's going to tell me it's very weak, and I have to confirm that I'm using a terrible <laughs> password. <laughs> You could use a real password, but please write it down and or memorize it because I have no access to that. The email of your uh, of your account here. If this was a real WordPress site on the real internet, this is the address that you would plug in to get a notification when you sell a product. The the email that you use to retrieve your lost password. That's a, an important email. But here in WAMP or MAMP, it doesn't really do much. So victor at campus.com, whatever. That's not a real email, doesn't matter. We're just setting this ourselves up here. Uh, okay. uh, just make it fake. If you don't have a real address, just make it up. It does need an email address for you to proceed. If this were on the real internet, if this WordPress website were on the real internet, I would want people to be able to find it with a Google search or searching on Yahoo or searching on Bing. I want them to find my site. But this is a development environment. It's a testing site. It's not real. It's not on the internet. So we're going to turn that off. Don't let the search engine find us. We're not on the real internet yet. Uh, we will be able to turn that off later. And we must turn that off later once we upload it to the real internet. Or else we're going to hide ourselves from search. And then we're not going to get traffic and make sales. And that won't be good. Again, if you deviated from what I wrote here, write it down so that you can log in. <coughs> Click Install. So click Install WordPress. After success, click Log In and Log In with the username and password you just made. So we'll pause right there. After you get that login screen, we'll pause there just to confirm that it worked for everyone. And then we'll go on.
that you see this, it's recognized. After you do that setup, which does need a, hu a few hoops to jump through, obviously, we get to the screen of logging in, and then we I click log in, and, and it takes me to the dashboard. Now, um, again, we will do this together a few times, and then you should be able to do it on your own. Um, the steps are here, all spelled out. When we come back next time, we'll do it again together, but we're, we're going to need to do these these steps again, and then we'll be ready to use WordPress. Now, to confirm also, uh, what people do is, you know, we've got WordPress set up, and then we go, uh, we accidentally close everything, you're like, how do I get back? So let's do this on purpose. In your web browser right now, close it completely. Yes, just close that screen so that it goes out completely like that. I was currently using Firefox. Um, I'm going to then jump over to a different browser. Whatever browser you were just using, use a different one now to show you uh, how to get back into it. Once you've set it up correctly and you want to get back into it, if you accidentally close it, I have it right here in the handout, but just to show us, uh, so I'm going to go to this one over here, Opera. I was using Firefox, I'm just going to go to a different browser. And basically, like I said, you've got, to, you've got the address, http colon localhost slash wordpress now when you go to localhost slash WordPress, it won't show you the installation screen anymore. We've gone through the installation screen, now it'll show you your WordPress site. Big bold colors and photos and you've got a site that we can start working with. So we've got WordPress set up. We needed a database, we needed the web server, we needed the software, a lot of setup, I know. But then that's why you go to WordPress.com or you go to GoDaddy and you pay them and they set it up a lot faster. <laughs> But here, for free, we need a little bit of setup, and once we get the practice, it should be a lot easier to work with. Yes? So when says one-click install, yeah. through that whole first Yes, exactly. Yeah, if you go to these providers, nowadays WordPress is so popular 
you buy this one click installer package from them and then yeah you just click install and it does it no need to create the database all of that it'll create your login and then you just log in uh, short answer no yes answer <laughs> uh, long answer yes but uh, we need to get to that and I've got a handout for it okay this is how the website currently looks there's a bunch of stuff okay great well I want to get I want to get back to actually editing the site and if you look on our handout here it says okay uh, basic WordPress tips uh, visiting your site is simply going to localhost slash whatever the name of your folder is and my folder currently is WordPress and that folder again is the name of the folder in the www folder so if I called my WordPress folder kitty cat then my address is localhost slash kitty cat it's the name of the folder in the www folder so that's when I said that you can create multiple websites here Victor's Bakery and then I would be able to set up localhost slash Victor's Bakery I would make a new copy of the WordPress software into this folder name it something else and then have multiple folders I'm gonna put that in the notes um, you can have as many WordPress folders in the WW folder of WAMP. Just name them different things. And then the URL is different for each. So if my folder is called WordPress my address is localhost slash WordPress. If my folder is called Victor's Bakery, then the address is localhost Victor's Bakery. If the name of my folder is Victor's Bakery with spaces and apostrophes and all of that, then that causes a little bit of trouble because no, you know, ad web addresses have get have trouble with spaces and all of that stuff. <coughs> Question. So that would be your domain name. Victor's yeah. Victor's exactly. Correct. This would be the domain name um, in WAMP. Exactly. Uh, when we eventually talk about you know GoDaddy and Bluehost and such, we're going to transfer this from localhost slash WordPress into victorsbakery.com. We'll cover that later. So basically I'm saying here don't have spaces and symbols in folder name. This causes problems for people all the time. Uh, they change the name of that WordPress folder to MySpace website. And even that one little space can cause problems because uh, you should you, you don't see spaces in, in web addresses it's not really allowed they have to put in a different special character so we shouldn't have spaces in our folder names that causes problems yes you know if you create another folder called Victor's you have to still copy the zip file that you uh, yeah. extract it into that folder Yes, that's why we. That's why when we got our zip file, we we did right-click copy. We copied the WordPress software into here, so we just need a new copy of the WordPress software with a different folder name, and we've got a new site. Um, both because the folder has all of this stuff, which is what you need. So when you copy it out of the zip file you need the whole folder but you can just call it anything you want so you need everything in the folder but with a different name for different sites but you just change the name there yeah okay so um, let's go here get to the login screen localhost slash wordpress slash wp dash admin in your browser here I want to log in to edit the site so it's localhost slash WordPress slash WP admin.
So that WP Admin link is always the one you can use to log into the site to make changes. But what might change is, well, what's the name of your folder? If I called my folder kitty cat, then it's localhost slash kitty cat slash WP dash admin. Yes? Could you go back in and change that folder name now? I think it'll cause problems now because we've already attached the website to the database. So the website knows all of its information connected to the database. If you change the folder, then the database and site are no longer connected. Login. Localhost slash your website slash WP dash admin. So generically saying it here. What is the name of your folder? The name of your folder is the name of your site in the www folder. So localhost, it's always http colon slash slash. Depending on the name of your folder, then wp dash admin. That's always the same. That might change. And eventually, when I get to the real server of victorsbakery.com, that is the that is the domain name. Eventually, when we migrate it, which is going to replace localhost slash WordPress. Mm -hmm. If I wanted to log into my admin screen here, well, it's just wp dash admin at the end of your web address. That's on my notes as well. And that's going to get you into the dashboard. Yes. Is there any kind of different setup you need to do here um, if you want to make sure that your actual website is going to have a secure protocol? No, we can't quite do that here. The secure protocol has to be set up on the real server. That whole SSL certificate and such, right. that has to be set up on the real server. So we can't really so do that here. Nothing we need to think about here in preparation, I guess, for that. No, we would do it on the real server, but we'll cover it a little later. Yeah. Yes, I think it's free the first year, and then after that, it's not. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we'll cover that. Yeah. Uh, so right now, we have actually very, very terrible security. We have an, we have a login of admin and a password of password, and we don't have security features turned on. So our website is very insecure. Good thing. Good thing it's not on the internet. It's only on your computer at the moment. All right, so we got into the login screen. Go ahead and log in. If you followed my handout, the password, the admin, the username is admin, and the password is password. If you made up your own username and password, I don't know what it is. You type it in and log in. And this lost your password won't work because we're not on a real server. And if, if you don't remember your password, we're going to have to start over. You're going to have to start over because we have no way to retrieve it. You go ahead and log into the dashboard. Let's pause here for our second break, just to make sure it's all working. You can look at the other items in the handout here if you would like. We will do these together after the break. But if you've gotten to step four here, we've installed the software. We actually did things that are very complex. We created the database. We downloaded the software. We installed mm. the, the software on the server. We created an admin account. That, that stuff is complicated. If you were able to do it, raise your hand. OK, great. Take your hand and pat yourself on the back. You did a good job. If you didn't, we'll take a little break to make sure we're on the right path. It's 8.10. We'll be back at 8.20, and then we'll go on.